Happy Monday, everybody. We're coming off of an extravaganza-filled weekend here. So many pods. 20, 25 people. Some of them were no bigger than locals, but it's the results that we care about. Make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on more content. And if you guys participated and you did well with Rogue or something cool, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. I want to see these results. And after the Pram Kids at Emancipator and Giant reveal this weekend, Seems like we have a new contender in the metagame, so let's dig on into the review, shall we? So the little pie chart you see on your screen here is just kind of a nice little representation of things that I know that I've seen so far. From what I've been told by a lot of people, Drytron was the clear winner of the weekend in terms of sheer representation across all pods. Um, if you guys haven't really been paying attention to the metagame, I shouldn't need to tell you this, but Ben 10's constant searchability is a little bit of a problem. It's uh, it, it's kind of crazy, actually. I'm already expecting the Ben 10 ban videos soon. All right? like, I guess I'll have to make one, too, talking about the uh, the state of this. But there was some rogue that actually did well. And this isn't, like, the top 16 rogue, either. Uh, keep in mind, like I said, some of these pods were 20, 25 people. Uh, I think Akino's pod was 27. And, it, and uh, after drops and everything, there were 23 left. And he got 15th place on a 2-3 record. All right, so that's nothing too crazy. But we did have Elise Davis. We'll, we'll talk about their list here in a little bit on this video. Uh, Praying Kids at Emancipator. And I did talk about this deck Friday. Those of you saw Cody playing it. Jabril's been playing it on DB as well. Uh, this deck makes boards. And those boards are a very scary thing for these decks to handle. So there's a little bit of an issue with this. All right. Um, plus, nobody really knew how to handle this. Elise went 5-0 in their bracket. All right, think about that. All right, they went 5-0 undefeated and then lost in top eight, which is kind of sad. But at the end of the day, Prank Kids and Emancipator is still doing something. Now, also up on the rogue chopping block here, Subterror won an entire pod. I was so happy to hear this. All right, uh, it's more basic... Uh, Subterra, we'll talk about this more here in a couple minutes. But really, seeing Subterra come out of the woodwork, like I said, yeah, Drytron is the clear dominant force in the metagame with VW, Virtual World, right behind it. But at this point in time, it's it's not like that big of a push. Uh, actually, in Elise Davis's bracket, uh, Brendan Beckman, I believe, won with um, Virtual World. So I was really excited to see that. Like, yeah, Drytron's like, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, like, we can see that things are beating it. And then we also had freaking Salaman Great. This deck can outgrind Drytron. And think about that. It took this long for something at least semi-competent to return back to the metagame. Uh, featuring off things like Ravelry of the Warlords and Floodgates to burn out this deck. And I found that incredibly interesting that we now have a grind deck back in the metagame to do this. So this weekend was all about Rogue. All right, we have the established metagame. We know what's going on. Uh, we also had a Shadal. Uh, there were a couple of reports of like top 16 Shadal Dogmatica list. Um, and I was like... Okay, so they're not quite top eight material, but they did get there. Okay, I lied. There was one. There was one Shadal Dogmatica that made top eight out of the weekend. I don't have the list on hand for this video, but Rogue did do it. All right, Rogue did what it needed to do. I'm more excited for Rogue than I am the meta game right now. Just seeing that players are making strides to push through the oppressive power of Ben 10, I think is a very good thing. All right, we're going to pass it on over to those deck profiles so we can kind of see where the metagame is shifting. All right, the first list we have up here on the screen is Elise Davis's list from their pod. They went 5-0 in Swiss, and then unfortunately lost in top eight, which it is what it is. Uh, it can't really be too bad or feel too bad about that, but 
This is pretty much what Jabril and Cody have been working on. I know Jabril supplied um, a lease with this list. So basically, you're going to be using the Praying Kids engine as link climbing fodder. And basically, with the fact that Rock sees as a rock, I mean, it's going to basically allow you to get access to all your other three. And the cool little thing about this deck is you also get access to the Battlin' Butler. I think I've heard different opinions on this, um, if it's really worth playing or not. I think it's a little bit up in the air, but I mean, if you can splash it in, you don't have any reason not to play the resource as you have room in the extra deck for it. I guess you could try to cut it. I almost don't feel like it's worth it. Outside of that, the entire general premise of this deck, we're going to access our Link Climbing 800 IQ. We're going to produce things like Appalosa, uh, Unicorn Interruptions through the opponent's turn, through IP, and on Borla Savage. It's still kind of the same boards that this deck has been making for a little while now. But players just didn't know how to handle this deck this weekend, being something... A little bit new. So yes, this is Elise Davis's first place, or first place in Swiss top eight list for everybody. And like I said, I think that this list has a lot of cool potential from the metagame, at least in terms of being new. A lot of people discounted at Emancipator for pretty much this whole format now. Like after we lost Buster, I mean, like it was pretty much a game over along with Block Dragon. I think they had a chance last format with Buster, but it's pretty much long since fallen off. So kudos to Elise for showing the world that this deck still has a chance. All right, next up we have the Sub Terror Boys. All right, now this was first place, undefeated and Swiss and top cut. All right, this was Cesar Rodriguez's list. Uh, Got Milk Gaming and House of Horrors TCG. I got to give that quick shout out for him here. So he went 8-0 with this. All right, now particularly I do see that we have the, the nice little splice of hand traps here, the 2-2. Two -two. I like the Avarice here for the recyclability. I don't know how many people kind of thought about this because you could technically reload up for the second dragoon i don't know how often that actually comes up uh that just sounds like some bm right there but i do some real bad manners actually uh actually the, just the nice splice of all the two two traps here like a lot i'll see here that we have the standard book of moon uh and our sub terror package is pretty basic stuff actually um this would appear to be our centralized win con and I have really bad news for our opponents if they side for us and then we just kind of blow them out. Like, the Waking the Dragons here, I feel like, is just GG to people. Also, I wonder how many times that this came up against Drytron that they just got blown out because they just, oh, can't revive my stuff. Guess I'm packing up my cards and walking away from the table. So, kudos to Caesar here for doing amazingly well with sub terror dragoon like this is a win in the books for rogue this deck has been struggling so long in the community right now and for this deck to log down that win is a very very important thing we also have the salamangre and this was uh christopher Lastaria's list. Uh, and down here, I do want to point out that we are packing in the triple copies of Rivalry. This is going to ensure that we can slow down the tempo of the game and punish our opponent for trying to capitalize on any other sort of monsters. Uh, I also feel like our engine has pretty much solidified itself here. Uh, we are not playing the Lady Debugs, though Lady Debug is a good card for this deck. I feel like the draw power off of this to get to your hand traps is what you're going to value more in the long run. Uh, once you kind of start to kind of take away um, some of the more brickier cards, also remember you're still going to try to OTK your opponent with Transcode Talker. Transcode is still one of the best cards that your deck has going for it. Outside of that, uh, this is going to be your standard control variant of Salad. You're still going to Link Climb, and your deck still has one of the if not one uh, the best grind game out there like your deck's recursion is good also we're playing the one will now i, I know in previous formats we've gone from like two to three i i feel like at this point in time this is going to be the number that you're going to want to focus on because much more of this you're kind of bulking down into the brick department and you don't really want to do that so this was christopher lastaria's list for everybody all right the last list i have everybody for for you guys for this video is Blair Hunter's Drytron list. Uh, he did make top eight in his uh, pod 
And I just wanted to showcase that we're still doing kind of the same basic things that we've been doing. Though, this card right here, this has become a little bit more of a uh, sauce tech choice, actually. Uh, Pepega Tintin was talking to me about this earlier, and it, it was kind of brought to my attention. I saw Blair was playing it in uh, his pod, and I was like, really? So... This card lets you get the Millennium Eyes Restrict on the field, which lets you stop your opponent from hand-trapping you. Yay! All right, that's your entire premise of playing this. Also, the fact that it is a level 1 monster gives us more access to this. In the future, when we get the Drytron monster, this card will be great. It's just going to be an extender for the deck. See, we're still playing Lancey here. Outside of that, the rest of this deck is the most basic phenomena in the entire format. Like... There's nothing too crazy I want to point out here. Uh, I do see that we have moved the Herald of Purple Light to the side deck. Uh, Blair also has the Drolls packed into the side deck as well to punish his opponent. Outside of that, very, very basic stuff. So this wraps up everything that kind of happened for of what I've seen for information so far. So guys, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on more information like this. And there's not going to be a stream tonight. Uh, Bushy Road is doing the thing, so I'm going to relax and enjoy that. And I will see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day. Yeah, back here later on in the day. Peace out. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Truffle Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mco 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcoolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.